coming. He's going to get there. Yes, the Coors won it. What a champion, mate. We don't Right, oh, kia ora and good evening, everybody. We're back again for round two. The boys get paid coming at you from the Export Beer Garden studio. I'm Matt Davies. I'm joined here by Luke Kimmies. How are you, mate? Really well, mate. Uh, we made it to week number two. We survived Tarapa. We did survive Tarapa. Ed, you well, mate? Your first uh, trip up north and your first time to Tarapa. You feeling all right about it all? Yeah, it was a fantastic uh, sort of first, you know, introduction to the, the North Island racing. And I was pretty excited to, you know, just get stuck in. And yeah, it was pretty brutal early doors there. Eh? First three bloody races were up against it. Uh, and I was like, Ted, save me here. Save me. Uh, but, you know, Imperatriz showing them how classy she is, uh, that helped. Yeah, the punt was tough at times, but off the track we had a hell of a, hell of a good day. Um, there were some good people around. Thanks very much to Butch Castles, obviously, for hosting us on the day. Um, awesome supporter of us, so thanks very much, mate. Uh, Luke, you got hosted by a few people at some point during the day, didn't you? I was uh, lucky enough to uh, go and pop down and say hello to uh, some of the jockeys and see see how it all works behind the scenes, which is uh, always interesting to get a bit of an insight as to those parts of racing and then up into the Tiako box for a, for a beer or two there as well. And then next to them, I noticed a couple of familiar faces, uh, one being Anton Leonard brown uh, and then Damien McKenzie as well. So it was a bloody who's who of New Zealand on course at Tarapa and, of course, you know yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> and you, thanks, mate. Yeah. And we had the goat as well. How good was it to see him? He'd, he'd won a few at the Taiwa Mutu Darts last night, hadn't he? Ed? Yeah, I think he did have a good time down there. Um, I should have probably gone in hindsight, but um, <laughs> I did have a bit on, and I just moved to Auckland. But definitely, the darts will be on the cards next year. I'd say. Yeah, he was flying, introducing uh, the All Blacks to the jockeys. It was a hell of a day down there. Um, beautiful weather, some really good racing, tough punting um, like Ed mentioned, but I know we found a few winners on the way home, but if anybody missed it, um, there was a video uh, online that you can check out. Here at Tarapa Racecourse, looking forward to the Foxbridge Plate today. Gino Severini, Luke. Brought the trailer down, mate. Top four finish. Surely, but it's good to be back on track. Let's get stuck into it. <laughs> So Mustang Valley heavily on the drift. Are you a bit worried for your best bet of the weekend? Just get on, mate. The goat's got it on top. I've got it on top. So does Ted. Should be winning. You. Fucking second. Just getting home late as we expected. Well, Matty, we're watching them parade in the Fox Bridge. First group tour of the season. First day of spring. Who's tickling your fancy in the parade ring? Still happy with Gino Severini. It's been a bloody tough day on the punt for uh, for the lads, but. Uh, Hoping that comes in. Looking for a good race. Imperator is looking amazing. We'll see how we go. Yeah. MD, place. you're leaving the Waikato Racing Club. RJ, yeah. punch in the car. RJ, RJ's flight. Let's get on Caulfield. Lovely. Absolute Lovely winner. Lovely, just sitting in behind the speed. Stayed on that elusive rail that was pretty prosperous today here at Rapper and got the boys <laughs> home. MD, killing it. Are you driving? I am driving. Brilliant. RJ's flight did clean them up by four lengths, lads. Very well played, mate. I'm glad you were driving as well. Oh, mate, you guys, I, I mean, let's, let's get into this. You guys jumped in my car at about 10.30, 11 o'clock. I think, Luke, you'd already had about three beers. Ed, you were fresh, but you probably didn't need any too early. But you did get stuck in. Luke, can you remember the drive home? What's happened? Oh, of course I can, mate. It was a responsible day for me. Um, I mean, I didn't do any of the driving. So, yeah, I was in the back seat going to work, actually, trying to recover some of the, uh, the day down there at Tarapa. My favourite part of that day was, um, well, just that video, actually. You can actually progressively hear the voices just sort of rasp along into that sort of alcoholic state. Yes. And we were just, you know, a few beers deep at the end there, just bl- bl- blabbing on. Speaking of that, apart oh, from shit, the... Um, just opened a z- zero percent. That tasted weird. That's horrible news. That's Sorry, guys. Dreadful, dreadful. Uh, speaking of the noise getting louder, we did make some punts on the way home, but Ed, you're um, emceeing drum and bass voice uh, right in my ear as well. Did, did anybody, if anybody doesn't know, Edgar could be a drum and bass MC. Luke, confirm? 100% get into it. <laughs> All right, everybody, let's go. Uh, <laughs> right here on a Thursday night in Alexandra Park in the Harness. I tell you what, when you're sober and everybody else is pissed in your car and you hear that, it's uh, not, not an enjoyable experience, but I'll be looking forward to it next Saturday night. What punts were we on at Caulfield? How uh, much did we win? We were on a dollar thirty for Ed to get it in up in the boot by the time we got back to Auckland <laughs> at one stage there. 
Uh, I think we backed one called Waterford on the on the drive home, and then we got back to uh, Auckland in time to watch the uh, the good race over there in Caulfield, the Memsey as well. It was in my flat as well. Did you like it? Did, yeah. Huge screen you've got there. You're on um, the Shiba laptop or whatever that thing is. <laughs> I think it's the laptop you got me. Yeah, it's a MacBook Pro. Okay, let's be fair. The Toshiba. <laughs> <laughs> Your flatmate didn't want to come watch the racing with us? Um, yeah, no, nah, not the biggest racing fan, but we can work on that. <laughs> Surely. We haven't been kicked out. Get them involved next week. And there was a story from Hoppers that we won't get into later on. If everybody knows Hoppers from um, in, in, in Ponsonby, right? But we can get to that at some point. Um, people out there that are listening in, it's great to have you with us. As always, thanks to all of our long-time uh, listeners. It's great to have you back. And to our new listeners, hopefully you enjoyed last week's podcast. Hopefully you won a bit on the weekend. And hopefully you're looking forward to this Saturday and you've, you've sort of come back to tune in to us. Um, the idea is to keep you interested and, and, and get everybody into horse racing. So thanks very much for joining in. If you are listening out there and you're watching the races on Saturday, send through your black bookers from the weekend. We're keen to hear, because it was such a tough day on the punt, who uh, or what horses performed really well? Were they actually running in the money or they might have been running dead last but still hitting the line pretty well? We're keen to hear from you. So send something in the comments um, and we you'll go on the draw to win a BGP hoodie um and coming up later on we've got a nice uh cologne here that ed's actually sporting at the moment we'll talk about that shortly but uh yeah get your black bookers into one of bgp bgp hoodie uh tough punting on saturday lads but luke imperatures you said it uh it should just be the class horse and it was yeah and i actually hear that opie said afterwards that if it had been a better track he wasn't sure how far she would have bet them by so it's going to be all eyes down to hastings um, and, you know, it was, it was a really nice race by the end of the day there at Tarapa as well. And we saw some good horses and Butler fought on well for second and didn't give up. Demonetization was just booming home. One of the only horses to make up any ground. Uh, Darcy LaBella made up a, a bit of ground, but uh, bet a horse called Rosen Power, which I see 61s for the Tarzino. But you, you oh. have to think that um, Imperator is going to go down there and, and, and go to war with La Creek. Um, but... The way that she performed, you'd have to think she'll be she'll be winning that first leg, and if not, the second leg. So uh, I think Butler's not going to be going anymore, which is a shame. And then the same for Darcy LaBella. There is an option I spotted today, and I had a little crack at, which is Imperatrice to win both the Tarzino and the Arrowfield um, stud plate, I think it's called now, at $2.90, which I thought could be good shopping if she doesn't skip across the ditch. $2.90 is good money, eh? Yeah, very good money. I think that it's definitely a two-horse war for that big race, uh, the Tarzino. Um, but yeah, Imperatriz, the way she put them to bed, bloody at the top of the straight, it was good to see. And good to see Ted in person, in the flesh, screaming home horses. Wow, he's a he's an exceptional man. I should have mentioned Ted as well. I love it. He carries around his old school printed out pieces of paper with the form on it. Like yeah. that's amazing. Just constantly writing things yeah, down. Yeah, it's good. Like, oh god. Yeah, yeah. He's he's a he's a sharp man. He's always watching. He rang me last night. Um, and, and, you know, we had a, a little bit of a debrief about some just different runners and whatnot. So, yeah, he's a very, very busy man and very astute judge. He is indeed. Keep following him, people. Uh, I actually had a, t- had a bet on Imperatriz in the uh, Tarzino 185 on the futures market. I reckon oh, like, I'm really happy with that. Like, La Creek, yeah, okay, this horse is meant to be amazing. But, well, it, it is amazing. But it's not had the two runs that Imperatriz has had, right? Yeah. Uh, I think uh, dollar eighty five is going to be good shopping. I think it might be into dollar sixty now. Wow! Really. I was just going to bring that up. It is dollar yeah, sixty. That must have been because you put about eight hundred dollars on it. <laughs> <laughs> You've been looking at my TV, okay? no, <laughs> absolutely not, absolutely not. Um, lads, uh, sorry, uh, the in laws, the Luke, they enjoyed Butler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they were. Um, oh, they were, they were obviously happy, and it's just one of those things. You have a good horse, but then you come up against one that's just a, an absolute one out of the box and a freak. So. Uh, they still enjoyed themselves and tucked into it. And, yeah, I think they, they cleaned up on the power play. Imperatrice to win, Butler to run top four. Looking back, in hindsight, probably could have um, had maybe Butler top three to get a little bit of extra juice out of the orange there for that power play. But the punters still took 50000 off the tab uh, with those power plays, and there was about 700 individuals bet 1,000-odd bets. So, yeah, bloody, bloody good uh, traction from the community out there to have a crack. And those uh, in-laws are good for a beer, weren't they? Yeah, well, we just got a corona, and then I turn around and I see, you know, they're counting how many of the, <laughs> us there were, and they're getting us another one. I'm like, okay, yep, good, rightio, just Except what we need. They're winning too many races. Yeah. <laughs> how good's that? Um, and speaking of Butler and obviously Alan, Ch- Alan Sharrick train runners, uh, I think I read an article this week that 
Butler, Tavi Mack and Darcy Labella um, all aren't going to the Spring Carnival. So potentially horses to follow um, outside of the Spring Carnival because he always puts them in good, you know, in the races that he thinks are going to win, right? Yeah, it'll be interesting to see where all those horses line up and I'm sure they've got a plan and yeah, he, he's he's very good at placing his horses where he knows that they can win or be very, very competitive. So, yeah, I thought Tavi Mack probably should have been in there for a little bit longer. Um, yeah, I've got a little bit off Darcy LaBella now as well. So I'll just be a little bit careful next start. Wouldn't get too carried away. But, uh, yeah, Butler, I think he, he's worth another crack. Nice. Okay, all right. Well, um. We found, and I'm sure all the other punters did out there, that uh, the Tarapa track bias on Saturday was pretty unbelievable. Anything that got to the front, apart from Imperators, which probably makes us run even more impressive, um, they were just so hard to run down. Were there any that you fellas found or, or, or had a look at that kind of didn't really get on that speed but ran home really well that you'll be looking at over the next few weeks? I think... <sighs> You go, mate. Oh, okay. I will. Um, I, I just thought that um, I was pretty much too steamed to assess. Um, <laughs> after about, honesty, about right, the eh? sixth race, I was like, um, hang on a minute. There was a race. <laughs> it was a good day, though. And um, uh, I, I didn't mind the way 1ZB got home, but that was on the – did just rail all the way home. I think there was a horse earlier on in the day called Arbe from memory. Uh, it might have been in race – one, yeah, RB maybe, A-R-B-Y, and was booming home. <clears throat> and then, excuse me, even Wild Knight, you know, there's some big raps on that horse. Mustang Valley, just like we thought the risk could be that something skips away on it and it just can't quite pick it up. And actually got a bit closer to that horse that won that race than, than I thought. You know, that winner paid 25 bucks and still two lengths away. But I think the, the, the bet that we should have had, but we were probably caught up in getting our next beer and then saying hello to everyone. And I think you actually picked it out was because and, and getting to the front and and it just off it went and ended up winning by about 3.8 lengths, paying $8.90. Yeah. Hurtful. I, I wish I'd punted on it. It was paying, I think, like $11 actually fixed odds when I had a look at it. But, um, yeah, like you say, you get carried away. You listen to everybody's opinions. And that was one thing that I kind of found on Saturday. You hear people talking about things and you're kind of second-guessing yourself. Or actually, if you're sitting at home punting, um, not that it's the most sociable thing to do, but you know, if you're sitting at home doing it, you could probably win a little bit more money than listening to everybody else, eh? It can be very, very hard to... You get so many different opinions, and then obviously having a few beers, it definitely gets tricky. Yeah, absolutely. A couple I'd be looking out for were probably White Noise, who won that race, and it was it did get to the front, but that thing uh, had a really, really good season last year. I shouldn't call it a thing. It's a horse. It's a great horse. Grey horse. Um, uh, went over to Australia and, and run pretty ad- admirably. It's probably targeted towards the Livermore Classic at this point, but... Yeah, that was that was super impressive, and Andrew Forsman's a, a serious trainer of those days. Also, Soprano Supreme, who um, who the Taco Stable said, don't punt on on this race because it's too short, but it was coming home really, really nicely, and that's also targeted at the Liver Mole as well. Beautiful. What are we? Uh, so, what are we doing this weekend, bit wise? Well, we'll get we're going to get to that. Um, just a quick mention before we do that: uh, the Mimsy stake, stakes on Saturday. Dragon Leap running fourth, which is unbelievable. Dragon Leap we, for the people out there we mentioned last week um, was supposed to be going to the Foxbridge Plate on Saturday, but they opted for Australia. Went over there and ran really, really well uh, in fourth position. So hopefully, it can pick up a win um, at some point this season. Yeah, we'll be keeping an eye on that. That's for sure. Um, but like you say, Ed, we've got some, um, you know, we've got some races to look forward to this week from your hometown as well. Hey. Um, thanks very much for all of those who have been making comments. I haven't seen any. Hopefully the lads have. Hopefully Ed's keeping up with them. Um, yeah, there's a few in here. Good. There's a few uh, tips that we'll have to dissect and go through and try and pick a winner out. People have been sending through their um, their black bookers. But uh, from here on, if you want to send through your best bets, we've actually got an Ed. I mean, if, if anyone wants to come into the studio and smell them, uh, we've got the Verat 18 uh, Cologne to give away. Uh, co- yeah, let's let's hold it up uh, for those that are streaming in. It's really, uh, oh, it's just punchy. beautiful. It's really, it's really punchy. It's it's directly um, bought in here by Verat Coley. So um, if there's any interest in winning that, get your best bets from the comments. I'll tell you what, uh, I accidentally did spray it in my mouth as well, and it tastes pretty poorly. So, um, but it does smell um, okay. Is all I'm going to say. <laughs> it does smell okay. Uh, Virat Kohli, you know, he's, he's he hasn't scored a hundred for about a thousand odd days, so at least he's sort of working off the field and trying to, you know, work his game up. Is that the worst thing you've put in your mouth? Um, oh. Quite possibly. <laughs> 
Well, I'm glad you found some, mate, because you were asking Luke on the drive home on Saturday, where can I get your cologne, mate? You smell great, you know? You're getting there, mate. This Auckland lifestyle, eh? He's worried about it. I probably just about could have sold one of, uh, one of mine to you, the rate I was going on the punt. So uh, we'll see maybe next trip. Brilliant. On a, on a slightly serious note, we do have some racing this weekend from Rickerton. Um, and Ed, you actually picked a few winners today, mate, which is really great. Hopefully some of the people out there got onto it. Um, but yeah, you've, you've got some thoughts for, for racing at, at Rickerton on Saturday. That's right. The Cantabrian man. Thank God I got some bets home today. Otherwise, it would have been bloody scratching at the bottom of the barrel. Um, but yeah, no, it was certainly good to get off on the right foot and sort of, it was the first, first day of me doing those selections through the app and seeing how that all process works was sort of interesting and yeah, it was almost quite exciting, actually. It was an entertaining day in the office, updating the bloody TRB, going, oh, who's yeah. won now? How'd you go put, uh, punching the notification out? Yeah, no, it was all good. We've got a lovely assistant, Jade. She helps me out with all that stuff. So. Exciting. Yeah, it was bloody great. 25,000 phones around the country. Cha-ching! Yeah. The cha-ching sound is bloody... Oh, it's crisp, eh? Yeah. It comes on at meetings, eh? And everyone's like, oh, what the fuck's that? <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Just making money. Um, but yeah, so Rickerton Park on the Saturday. Um, well, I interviewed uh, Andrew Carston earlier in the week, and he's tipped out Where's Wally in race number two, and that's at the five and a dollar ninety. Uh, it's Andrew Carston's best bet for Saturday. He's almost a lock for a top four. He's got plenty of gate speed. He just rolls on out, and um, he just sort of boxes away in the heavy. Um, so he's definitely a good each way chance. And then we go to race number three, which is the best on the card, um, and that's Grayson Gray. Did uh, last start at one on Boxing Day in Ellerslie and just sort of cruised home there. And this horse is obviously not going to be targeted for this race. It's going to be running in on Saturday, but you'd hope it'd get home um, against those sort of horses. Um, and, you know, it had a nice heavy track trial win to prepare. Um, and, yeah, I just think Grayson Gray should be probably winning. Um, and then I've got a wee bit of a roughie for you guys who do the value plays. This is called Love Squirrels. It's a Michael House runner. Um, I've, I've talked to Michael a few times about this horse because at Rickerton Park, I've seen it running around on the synthetic and it's just sort of bolting along. And I'm like, wow, I must back that horse when it gets to the races. Um, unfortunately, I did back it last start and it didn't fire. Uh, but that's because he said he does sort of, uh, she wants the 1,000 uh, metres. And 1,000 metres uh, track and distance um, stats are appealing. She's got two starts in the heavy for a second. And she's paying about 15 and $3. And she's got barrier two. So not the worst, I thought. And $18 into 15 So there's a bit of stable confidence around. Um, and then race number seven, Burnview. Uh, $4 shot. Um, he's just a tough bastard, really. Just been grinding away through that Grand National Festival. He finds another winnable race. Wide jo- jockey. Um, he just loves it wet. And, uh, and yeah, he should be getting home. It's not the only one. Wow. <laughs> is, that enough, is that enough talking? You've done a lot of form there, mate. That's wrapped. and wrapped. That's good. That's, that's outstanding. Look. What about Sammy Wynn? Did we touch on Sammy Wynn? Sammy Wynn, yes. I do have that written down here. She's actually the jockey and the trainer, which is uh, pretty interesting stuff there. So good luck to Samantha Wynn. She's a pretty good value. Well, I'm sure we'll get her on the show. She's a lovely little Irish accent. So everyone wants to listen to that. She's got a BGP putty, uh, hoodie. <laughs> she's got a <laughs> she's got a, does she? I don't think there's any BGP puddings here. Is this, does she train a lot of horses or is this her first one? Uh, no, it's not her first one. She's trained a few. Um, but she got this one off um, the guy, Coolbeck, or I think his name is, and he just retired. And it came second in his last ever start. So okay. um, there's a bit of a sentimental uh, horse here. It's, so it's her first time training this horse. And uh, obviously she's riding it. And yeah, you should bring probably, her tomorrow. Probably goes close. Yeah, probably should actually. You know, an interview, Sammy. If you're listening, Ed, Ed's going to get in touch. Yep, beauty, lock it in. That's just another block come out on the account by the looks. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> oh, luck of the Irish, Sammy. Uh, <laughs> Luke, you like one in race three, there, do you? Yes, that's going to be my best later on, and I think it's good to see that uh, Ed has found it. I don't think anyone's going to miss it, but it is a bonus back, bonus back race. So yeah, it is. Uh, Grace and Gray, I really like this horse, and kicking off at two dollars forty, I think it'll be worth a worth a bet. So I've already had a little something on, and that should get us off uh, to a good start there on Saturday come race three. Brilliant, great summary, lads. Grace and Gray beat Dynastic last year, which went on to win the Karaka Millions, which is uh, yeah, pretty good form, eh? Yeah, exceptional. Uh- Exceptional form. Arg- arguably, um, not to mention the hurdles on uh, on Sunday afternoon. I think we've got the Pakaranga Ka- Hunt Cup. <laughs> Excuse me. Careful, <laughs> careful. You're treading on that. Uh, this is the podcast for good punts, isn't it? Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, look, the, one of the premium race meetings on Saturday is the um, is the Whanganui Guineas uh, down there at the Whanganui Racetrack. 
Uh, we've had spent about six or seven hours uh, looking through the form over the last few days. And um, before we start getting into the form, disclosure, it's pretty difficult to p- pick a winner down there by the looks of things at this stage, Luke. It certainly is. And this race meet is always a bit like this. And I think what happens is we have the Fox Bridge, we start hissing for racing, you get a bit carried away, you get into your next Saturday. And if you've won some money last Saturday, you run the risk of giving it all back this Saturday. Mm. And I'd just say be very careful because if you go back through the list of winners of the Whanganui Guineas, um, you, you may run the risk of not actually being able to remember a single horse that's on the list. Yeah, you reckon? Yeah. I should pull it up. Well, I, well a tissue. A tissue ran there last year. Did she win? <laughs> no, she didn't win. Sorry, are you talking only about the winners? Yeah, yeah, just winners. Yeah, okay, fair, fair. Yeah, okay, Tissue's a good yeah. horse, though. You are, you are right, though, Luke. I mean, yeah, same thing. Like Most of these horses, from what I can kind of gather, go on to run in the longer distance races in a sort of March or April, and none of them go on to win them. But, um, yeah, they're sort of certainly not the top ones. Luke, what I wanted to ask you about that actually placed in this last season was Princess Biddy, BGP oh. horse. Mate, sorry, I'm, I'm distracting you here, yeah, but yeah. ran a really nice trial a couple of days back at Awapuni. Yeah, yeah, she won a trial the other day, so it'd be good to see her live up to the hype and the expectation that, as we horse owners do, uh, set for these horses yeah, and see if she can actually uh, put it together on a, on a race day. But um, keep the eyes out for the BGP Silks. She might be back at a track soon. Looked very good. Um, anyway, sorry to distract you with that. The fucking New Guineas, mate. What are your thoughts? Not much. Turn the page. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Um, I mean, I had a good look at this last night, and I, I was just so amazed. I see there's a bit of money for it, 280 into $2.40. Uh, I was on last start and was, uh, was, was let down, run second, but... Not too bad of a run uh, behind Pacific Dragon there. And then uh, the O'Sullivans have got Win Express coming down as well. And then Tiako have got Accidental Tourist. And there's no sort of money for that yet. But I think this race always, <clears throat> excuse me, to me, seems to be able to throw up a bit of a roughie. And I, I just can't work out who that roughie could be. I thought maybe Forsman might have one here with Mr. Mojo Ryzen. But I said he, he'd be... Happy if it would run in the top three or four. There's nothing here that I can have a decent crack at with confidence, uh, but I think maybe you beg to differ. Oh no, I wouldn't beg to differ. I think I think it's pretty t- I think it's pretty tough as well. But I'm just prepared to follow that Pacific Dragon form. Eh? Like out of if you're going to have a punt at Whanganui on Saturday, you might as well follow some good race form. For those out there that don't know, Pacific Dragon run I think a no second to Lickety Split, who was probably. Uh, well, was a, is a serious race horse and it's got a race horse and it's got a big rap. Um, mm-hmm. and it came out and ran second to it last start. So, um, Soph May's running second behind that. It's pretty good form. Yeah, and, I mean, good to see there's a bit of money on as well. Opens two eighty into two dollars forty. Um, yeah, probably on exposed form have to be the horse to have a crack at, and it looks like punters have been willing to take the two dollars eighty. Definitely, eh? with, the, with the Alan Sherrick stable, if the money's on, it looks good. Ed, there's a um. South Island horse in here called Carignan, and I was actually watching down in Rickerton a couple of weeks ago. Matt Cross made a, his bit of the day, but apparently, I read the Stewards report, it didn't really like the going. It was a bit too puggy, but Matt Cross was really confident on it that day. It's uh, out of the Kevin Myers stable. Have you got any knowledge or any thoughts? Well, um, I, I, well, I don't know. I didn't really get on board with that decision um, to back it again. I thought I thought this win was... It broke maidens in the in the first day of the festival, and it was you know a handy enough win, but it was a small field. Um, I think you have to be a wee bit cautious of a horse is winning in about a four or five horse field. You know, it looks yeah. a bit better than um, you know it, it, than is. it potentially is. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's a bit of a tricky race for me. I know where I'll be putting my money, and that is the goat's best bet um, in race four. It, it's eleven and three dollars, so that's just value for me. <laughs> If everyone wants to, I'll just I'll just talk about that right now, should I? What's it? Co- what's it called? It's called Judge Kelly. It's um, oh, on mate. debut, mate. It's not in this race. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no. I'm just saying. I'm just that's where I'm putting my money. Okay, race Good. four. Try to keep, keep going now. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. already yeah right. Maybe a few couple of beers have got me a little bit sloppy. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. Judge Kelly, great each way value, elevens and threes. Has caught the eyes at trials and jump outs and astute yard. Um, they wouldn't line her up in the black type race if they didn't think she'd perform. That's what the GOAT has to say about Judge Kelly. Nice Two, two nice trials to win. That's a really good segue though because yeah, the O'Leary's Phillies Stakes is also um, another three-year-old uh, race on the day. 
um, Balaconte won this last season and actually went on to have a pretty decent um, few runs after that as well from the Chrissy Banbury Stadium. Uh, sorry, Stable. She was she was absolutely loving that horse last um, last yes. spring. Uh, <laughs> Luke, have you got any thoughts on it? Again, like a very tricky field, and I I like the fact the goats uh, found us a twelve dollars short here from the guy Lowry Stable. So he's obviously been watching something. Um, again, I, there's nothing in here that I could have a lot of confidence about. I see that Wessex has come up as maybe equal favourite or second you, favourite. You've won money on this horse before, Wessex. I have. I have tipped it out previously, uh, but it's 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 one two from six, which isn't too bad. Again, it was um, you know in behind Pacific Dragon, so fourth in that race. So. Yeah, it'd be uh, interesting to see how that goes. This Wanganui is just one of those tracks where it's, yeah, it's uh, it can be a tough day and it can also be a tough night if you head out after down there. That's oh, for sure. really? What's going yeah. on down there? Not too much, oh, right. uh, but you can sure. always find somewhere. Yeah, good little sports bar there, known to pop into on the odd occasion. Good to know. Mm. Much like the just sorry segue, or oh, well, sorry, completely off topic, but the Mercer um, sports bar on the way home that you guys stopped to, you know. Take a piss in. <laughs> How was that? It was an Irish pub in Mercer. I thought there was only cheese there. There's a lot going on in there, wasn't there? I don't remember this. <laughs> no comment. Okay. All right. I've caught you off guard. Okay. Righto. Anyway. Jeepers. On to the next one. Like Can you, you pack a, uh, a picnic and a two-litre bottle of water for the next car ride? <laughs> Mate, you're, dri- you're driving next time, then. <laughs> Oh yeah, well we can we can find a designated driver, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dial a driver. We'll win enough to to um to pay the bills. Um, I'm with you. I like again. I reckon with this O'Leary's Philly Stakes. Apart from um the horse the goats going with that's on debut. Um, so you know I would I wouldn't be following it personally just because it's on debut on a heavy track. But the goat knows more than I do. Um, I'd be going for that <clears throat> rider stakes form again. And Labrassi was sixth. Um, behind Pacific Dragon was caught three wide the whole race. Wessex was fourth, but I'm happy to be on um, Labrassi in this. Like, I'm not going to be betting, but if I was. Give it another chance. Yeah, fair enough. I think, um, you know, it, it's easy to try and guess that something's going to win, but I just, yeah, don't want to pretend we're overly confident on something on a, what's going to be a pretty tricky field and a tricky day. Absolutely. And last time I was watching here, they like they were coming halfway in the car park down the straight. It's so wet. Like, you know, it's <laughs> just me? like, what's going on here? It's... it's yeah, sorry, guys. Wow. Uh, right, is there anything else you like on the card, or are we just not punting this weekend? Well, I'll, I will tell you about one. Um, <laughs> it's in race number one, actually, and we got given a little bit of an insight at Tarapa that there was going to be a Rubik Colt, I thought, starting at Wanganui, a two-year-old, and I've been keeping an eye out, <clears throat> and I see that there's a Rubik filly in the race, but it's four fifty into $3 already. At a wow. two-year-old race. Now, Lisa Rule Press, you'd assume, I think rode um, the Dapper uh, in the trial. I think that's right. I think she rode that. Yeah. This is race one, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, right. And she's chosen to ride this Rubicon Crossing. So maybe that's what we're going to get our weekend started with at 12.20 on Saturday. It's $3 at the moment. It might drift back out once the money starts to even up. But remember, this is a bonus back race, so you'll be able to get a $50 bonus back, uh, and there's nine in the field. So if the spruik is right and the money is right, then the boys should get paid. Love it. Those bonus back races are awesome, eh? You know, you know, you might as well have a crack. That's the thing. Well, that's what they want you to do, Matt. <laughs> and that's certainly what I often do. Is that B, that TAB marketing team are very, very smart. Yeah. Um, hey, well, look, like we've said, it's going to be pretty tough uh, on Saturday. We'll, we'll come to our best bet soon. Um, not follow them with huge amounts of confidence. Don't put your house on them like you would Catherine on the trots at Oamaru. But, uh, you know, have a go. Why not? Um, there's also some racing at Tarapa on, on Sunday, mainly um, steeplechase racing. But... I'm actually really looking forward to a couple of open handicaps there because we're sort of, what are we now, six weeks out from the Livermore Classic, four weeks out from the Arrowfield Stud Plate. We got, we're doing a punters club in the New Zealand Cup. Some of these races, some of these horses starting out on Sunday will be looking towards those. The likes of Amaralina, the Oaks winner. Marcus Aurelius was coming home really strongly in the last race. Ballon Rouge won the Oaks last year. Vernon Mee, true enough. Maroni Starry Beal um, will on be looking bubbles. for that New Zealand Cup as well. I should have mentioned on the bubbles. It ran almost dead last, last start. But there's well, yeah, there's, there's a few horses coming out on Sunday. There should be a couple of good races. Yeah, it will be. I'm very excited to see how true enough goes. Don't mind this horse. What, what about Miss Ella? Oh, 
that was yeah. We don't we don't really want to talk about that one, eh? Oh, it still hurts. <laughs> but Ted's got a share of the seller, so you know we we'll better fire up for for Ted. Has Ted got any thoughts on the race? We, no, he haven't. He'll probably ring me now. He'll probably ring me. Uh, <laughs> give it ten minutes. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> All right, well, I'm, I'm going to throw one out there. I, I wonder whether, and I'm, I'm not going to throw it out for Sunday. I would have done if I hadn't drawn 17, but Vernon Mee, like last season, I don't know if you remember Vernon Mee's performances last season, but third in the Awapuni Gold Cup, second behind Coventina Bay and the Bone Crusher and Herbie Dyke, second behind Titronic in the Zabiel Classic. Proper horse. And what race is that in, sorry, Matt? Uh, yeah, good question. It's one of the open handicaps. I think it's race six. I'd almost go on a futures punt in the Livermore for that thing. Oi, okay. <laughs> Okay, okay, Gino. Uh, <laughs> yeah, top four. Stick eight, top four. 18s in the liver mole. Yeah, yeah. Well, like we've talked about, the liver mole, all the good horses seem to drop out by that point. Not that this isn't a good horse, but... Just like Ed's high school, mate. Plenty of dropouts. <laughs> <laughs> Lincoln's a decile 10, mate. Is it? Oh. Wow. They still drop out, though, don't they? Yeah, become builders and things like that at 16, you know? Yeah, it's a good. few of my mates yeah, got into the plumbing, the apprenticeship yeah, sort of Mate, it's thing. a bloody good trade. Yeah. Shout out to all the plumbers listening out there. Yeah, absolutely. Backbone, apparently. Um, anyway, Ed, have we got any um, comments coming through from uh, the best bets and black bookers that are worth throwing out there, or, or do we need to get into the best bets ourselves? Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. in the in the comments here, I was about to say I'm getting excited. I was about to go full bore into the best bets, but um, yeah, Luke Alexander says uh, nothing about his best bet there. Um, <laughs> Cheers, we're, Luke. We're just trying to scan over these fields. Timberlake, Wanganui, race three. Oh, that's the first this. one I've seen. Yeah, that's Maybe up bring against... that up and we'll have a geese at that one. We'll keep scrolling. Um, that's against kick on from memory. Ooh, Caleb Larson reckons Soph May's Mr. Brightside Burgundy Rose Multi. Oh, Mr. Brightside Australian Racing. Have you, had, have you had a look at that at all? Yes, there's a field of about six horses and you qualify for the Cox Plate. Really? Yeah, and that's all that's it's drawn is about six horses. It's $2, Mr. Brightside. Okay. Get on. Multi, well, anything else in there, mate? <laughs> Um, just sort of get geezing over. Um, there's a few floating around. Mask Crusader, Eduardo, Box Exactor for me, lads. Okay, right. They're mainly every. But they must be like us. No one's punting on New Zealand this weekend. They're looking. They're looking over at Australia. It does seem like that is the pattern. Oh well, look. Hey, well, like we said, uh, I can't. Be- I can't believe we've not had more entries. You need to smell this for at Coley Cologne to really want to get your best bet in. <laughs> Uh, it is beautiful. Don't, so Don't you dare spray it on me, Luke. <laughs> <You're> so- <laughs> That's good stuff, mate. Oh, Your flatmates aren't going to know who's come home tonight. <laughs> Jesus. It's good stuff. You've still got time to get your best bets in and your black bookers in. We're really keen. Uh, and also, like we've said last week, like if anyone out there in the BGP community wants to get onto this podcast, there's a couple of, there's a bit of a gap here between Luke and I. There's a bit of a gap between Ed. You can come and produce with Adam and Joe. Whatever you want to do, you know, get involved. Get your, um, get your, get your comments in and we'll get you involved. Bloody oath. Love to have someone on. That'd be a bit of fun. A little sub in, sub out type section. Is it time to put the people onto the best bets? That's what they want to that's what they want to hear. Where are they going to invest their money this weekend? Because last weekend Sheesh. It wasn't very good. We got stung. Yeah. But yeah. that's part of the pun. And if you aren't willing to lose, you can't be expected to win. That's exactly right, mate. Well, no, you're you're hundred percent right. It is that time of the show. So mate, uh, why don't we kick off who's got Ted's tip? I've got it all right here, mate. Been chewing it no bit. wonder you've introduced us. You're right fired up. I'm right on the bat Love here. The Ted, meeting code four, Wanganui, race five, secret of more, $3.60. Yeah, it's a good bet. Fresh up, but it's going to win. Had a cruisy trial to, uh, that it won on the Alpuni Synthetic, um, you know, to prepare for this little cheeky assignment. Um, it can be a little bit slow away, but should be fizzing up and getting home. Okay. The Awapuni Synthetic is a racetrack, just for everyone wondering. Is that? <laughs> in, in the Manitoba too, yeah. Brand new as well. We haven't actually had a race meeting there yet. Soon, oh, soon come. I'm sorry, but this cologne is just <laughs> all over me. Eh? It's unbelievable. I can't concentrate. I actually reckon uh, it's not that bad. Can we get Virat Coley on the pod? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, we've got to at some point. So Ted's tip, uh, secret or more, that's a good bet. Yeah. That is a really good bet. Have we got anything from the GOAT this week? Yep, yep, I touched on the goat. We'll go again. Um, but, yeah, so, yeah, meeting code for Wanganui race for Judge Kelly. 11s and 3.30, good trials, can roll forward and surprise on a debut. It's good. It's good stuff on debut. Uh, anything from Australia? Yes, of course. We've got the great man, Matty, from Punt IQ. Meeting code 12, Mooney Valley race number two, Desert Icon. $3.80 you're getting for that. I think it opened at about four fifty when uh, Maddie sent it through to us. So there's 
He's been a bit on early, as always with Maddie's tips, because last week I think I got crunched in from 3.20 aft cabin. Didn't see the result of that. That might have been because of the few beers I was on. But, um, yeah, hopefully this week, Matty. $3.80, good money. Absolutely. Punt IQ, always throwing them out there. Uh, Ed, you must have a harness uh, punt for us. Well, I do, and I don't know why, but my first debut, Ed's Best Bet, was at Wagger Harness on a Friday night. Like, I'm a seriously... Crook oh, individual. I'm a crook individual. But um, we head to Australia again. <laughs> Menangle. Where's Menangle? Meeting code 21, New South Wales. Gotcha. Um, race number two, phase of glory. We're going to have to put on the Australian accent for this one because odds are out. Uh, no, uh, odds are not out yet. But I'm super keen on this big bloke. He's looking for a hat trick on Saturday. And I had a strong winning trial at Bathurst to prepare for this weekend. Hopefully he just leads the whole way. Nathan Turnbull leaning back in the sulky. Get it up, ya son. Get up, ya. What are you expecting price-wise? Um, uh, a little bit interesting on the price-wise. Um, maybe sort of $3 quote. Oh, But, you know, I say it and then they listen to me. Cause <laughs> I'm the world's biggest punter. So I'm sure they're uh, listening. Yeah, yep. so Bet365 are sitting there in their little offices in England or... I think they might be in Malta or something. I heard some sort of article about that. Um, anyway, that's off topic. But uh, 9 p.m. tonight, I think the odds will come out for Phase of Glory. Get up the hat trick. Nathan Turnbull, how are you? Get him on the pod. This is going to be a tough one to clip out for the lads and put on social media. We've got DJ booths and everything. You know, <laughs> Come on. Luke, what about yourself, mate? Yeah, I'm going to go down there to Rickerton, of all places, on Saturday. So that will be meeting code number six. Race number three, Grayson Gray, bet dynastic last start, has had two starts, a second and a win. I expect this horse to be going very close in the 1,000 guineas, so we'll be expecting it to to win. The only risk is that maybe it's a little bit underdone. It is a bonus back race, so if it runs second, third or fourth, we'll be getting our cash back up to $50. So I think it's a pretty safe best bet this weekend. Nice, good shout. Um, And yeah, I found it really difficult, but I'm going to have to go with Soph Mays, uh, I read an article today from Ellen Sharrick who seems pretty comfortable with where the horse is at. That Pacific Dragon form running second to it in the rider stakes was pretty good. It's been crunched in from 280 to 240. So um, out of all the difficult fields, I'm probably pretty happy to go with that uh, as the best bet for the weekend. So, yeah, hopefully uh, people follow, people uh, have the opportunity to win some money from those. Um, and yeah, We've just heard in from Robert Spork on the uh, comments here. He says, am I correct in saying that there are three things certain in life: death, taxes, and Zaki shitting in Ooh. at a dollar eighty five. Zaki's a dollar eighty five. Jeepers! Well, we'll we can let you know next weekend. <laughs> we'll find out next Wednesday. Well, next Huge Thursday. Call. I Ah, Zaki's a top horse. James McDonald on? Have we got? Do we know? Yeah, I'll just bring up the race. I've got it right here. J Mac is on James board. Whip him. On. Get him home. That's probably nearly a sure bet. Yeah, Profondo in there. Uh, Converge. Converge. Um, big boy Roy, big boy Roy, just loves it. Um, and prime candidate Bjorn Baker. Right. Hopefully, get a little bit of an interview with Bjorn Baker tomorrow. Um, and yeah, there's a bit more content coming. Wa- uh, coming wise, Jesus. Uh, there's a bit more content coming tomorrow with a few interviews with some trainers and drivers, and maybe the CEO of Rickerton Park, Tim Mills. Absolutely. Speaking of what's coming up, we've uh, as a reminder, everybody, we've got the New Zealand Cup Punters Club. Luke, is that open? No, 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 it won't open until uh, the Melbourne Cup's finished, basically. So okay. the, the day after that. So we'll have a week, a week build-up to get involved in that. Awesome. What I, I, I've, I've got confused, because what is open is Karaka Millions tickets. Yes, yes, there are a number of tickets available for that now. So those are in the BGP app. If you want a link to that or if you can't find it, drop us a message on socials and we'll point you in the right direction. Uh, there's some, some floating around for $100, and then they go to 125 once the first 100 are sold. So... Get yourself in nice and early. Four beers, a feed, and plenty of festivities on the night. Is that inflation or what? How does that happen? Oh, just a you know, a bit of encouragement to get people, you know, <laughs> right. t- taken over. Get in early, people. Get yeah. in early. Uh, and we've talked about a bit of uh, a few punt along sessions. We're, we're spruiking the Melbourne Cup potentially. Is that right? I mean, what? Why not? Why you not? Know, let's pick the hardest day of racing and punting in the year and have a crack at that. What could go wrong? Sixteen beers, three winners. That's right. As long as I'm not wearing Brett Coley's um, cologne, I might be right. Yeah, I hope not as well. It really, <laughs> really is getting on me. But uh, that's all good. I mean, look, what, what else is there to do on a Tuesday afternoon? And uh, big news from Tarapa. Like, Ed, come on, mate. This is your first time. Well, it like, might not be your first time in Auckland, sorry. Uh, you've moved to Auckland. You've got to experience the Tarapa races. And now we're going to Sydney for the Everest. Like, mate, 
what's happening? How good are you feeling about that? Well, when Luke sort of came to me in the office and said, "Do you want to go to um, do you want to go to the Everest?" I was like, "The Everest in Sydney." You're 50, not fucking climbing it. No, not Mount Everest, by the, the way, people. The Everest <laughs> and, and in Nepal. No, um, but I was like, "Are you joking me? That is an, uh, unbelievable!" Yes, yes, yes. Immediate yes, tick. Please sign me up. We, yeah, Luke, maybe give some detail on what the Everest is for those people out there. It's not Mount Everest. We're not going to go climb Mount Everest <laughs> on the weekend and just see how we go. It's a, it's a big horse race over there in Australia with some mega prize money. $15 million. That's massive. It is a big amount of cash. Uh, with the best sprinters from around Australia. So we're taking a bit of a tour over there, and I think we've got about 20-odd people that are signed up to come over at this stage. So it'll be a bit of a BGP on tour to Australia. Uh, my second question for Ed was, do you have a passport? Because you just don't know these days, do you? you know, especially from South Islanders. Um, um, yes, it's a short answer, I do. But it was, I'll have to get... I'll have to get what? I'll have to get mum to send it up. <laughs> oh, yes, I'll have to get mum to send it up. <laughs> but I'm actually going down to going back down in a couple of weekends' time, so I'll be able to pick it up. Oh, there we go. Good man. Yeah. G'day, mum. Bring the passport with you, mate. You never know when you're wanted overseas. Don't want to get it lost in the post. No, you won't. No, you don't. Like, 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 that's uh, just another example of some of the stuff that's coming up. We've got Group 1 racing over the next few weeks, and then we're going to be live from the Everest as well, which is just going to be absolutely sensational. Luke's always working on things and, and, and ways to kind of get horse racing out there and things like that. Ed, you're pointing a finger at me. What's going on? Yeah, just just to wrap up, if I can interrupt you, just just just, just a second there, thanks. Um, tonight, Alexandra Park is live, and I did drop my um, Harness podcast a couple of hours ago. Thank you to the producers. Um, they're working hard behind the scenes to get that content out. Um, I've actually got two tonight. I've got one at Ballarat in race number five, and it's Heavenly Brigade over with the um, Brosnan stable over in Aussie. Um, opened at about $8 into sixes, so there's a bit of stable confidence there. Um, and then, of course, Alexandra Park. In two races' time, we're going for Sky Delight. It's $8 into $6, so I'm on the right money trail. What race number is that, mate? Race number nine, meeting code five at Alexandra Park and meeting code 22 at Ballarat tonight. Outstanding. Get on, people. Any last word from you, Luke? The only thing I forgot to mention, mate, going back to some of the horses that stood out last weekend, there was an ex-Kiwi horse running in Australia called I Wish I Win, mm. and the punters did not miss $7 into 2.5 mm. and brain them. I actually got told on the Sunday... From the old, uh, I shouldn't say father-in-law, but you guys say that. Um, oh, yeah, boy, surely. Ah, <laughs> I'm a chance for a no lens at this rate. <laughs> <laughs> I got, oh, I was meant to tell you. I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> meant to tell me. That would have been good. It would have yeah. been good to know. But absolutely shattered. And I see Matty over there at Punt IQ. He, he found that too and had put it into the group. But I, I, was, uh, I was missing. But I watched it win and was like, holy shit. But the stable were very, very keen on it. So, Keep, keep an eye on I Wish I Win because I know they had a pretty big rap on it over here uh, and it'll be interesting to see if it can kick on over there in Australia. It's just always good to see those Kiwi horses going over there and measuring up because I think, you know, look at that, it opens at sevens and then the money starts to come and the serious punters start following that money and it goes around at 2.5. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it's a great point. Another one from the Taco stable going over there and doing well um, previously. I think Catalyst is supposed to line up in a Group 2 race this Saturday as well, first up for the first time in years after spo- was supposed to be in the Fox Red Plate on Saturday. So good luck to all connections involved with Catalyst. We really, really want to see that horse get back to its best, don't we? So, so good luck out there. Um, we've probably said enough tonight. Everybody, you can follow us on Instagram, email, TikTok, Facebook, the app. Boys Get Paid, the Alternative Commentary Collective. We're coming to you live here from the Export Beer Garden Studio. Wish you all the best on the pun on Saturday. Go easy at Whanganui, but uh, yeah, enjoy your day and have a good time. See you next week. See you, lads. Game, set and match. I'll shut the gate. They're going to do it again. The Kanaka Million goes with it and stays with it. But here's the cause now. He's coming. He's gonna get there. Yeah, the cause won it. What a champion! Boys, Mate, it's just out. another day, another dollar to be made. It's just another day. Boys, it's just another day, another dollar to be made. It's just another day.